Hi, my name is Jeff Hoffman, and in this lecture I'm going to cover the topics in molecular biology that you need to know for your Step 1 exam. There's a lot of DNA in a cell. In fact, if you stretched all the DNA from a single cell end to end, it would be about a meter long. Since a cell is only a few microns in diameter, it needs a way of packaging all this DNA into a small space. So how does it do this? Well, by coiling the DNA around proteins called histones, which are shown here. There's a few different types of histones, called H2A, H2B, H3, and H4. These aggregate together, and DNA wraps around them twice to form a nucleosome. There's one more type of histone, called H1, which is not in the nucleosome, but along the DNA that links nucleosomes together. So what causes DNA to wrap around histones? This is because the DNA is negatively charged, and histones are rich in the positively charged amino acids, arginine and lysine. The lysines on histones are particularly important because gene transcription is often regulated by covalently adding or removing methyl or acetyl groups on these lysines, which changes their affinity for DNA. Now, the effect of acetylating or methylating amino acids on histones depends on the specific amino acid and the specific histone, and you don't need to know that level of detail for the step one. But in general, adding acetyl groups or removing methyl groups allows it to be more accessible to RNA polymerase and other transcriptional machinery. This is known as euchromatin, which you can see here. In the opposite situation, having more methylation or less acetylation results in tighter binding of DNA to histones so that it can't be transcribed, and this is called heterochromatin. So which is transcribed more, heterochromatin or euchromatin? That would be euchromatin, since it's more accessible to the transcriptional machinery. I remember this by thinking that acetyl groups are much larger than methyl groups and therefore will push DNA away from histones, whereas methyl groups are small and allow it to stay close. That's not actually the mechanism, but it might help you keep these straight. You can also use the mnemonics in the book. Histone methylation mostly makes DNA mute, and histone acetylation makes DNA active. Keep in mind this is referring to the methylation of the histone proteins, not DNA. Cells can also methylate DNA, specifically at sites called CPG islands which are just places in the genome enriched for C's and G's. Why is it called CPG? The P represents the phosphate, which separates one nucleotide from the next. Specifically, the cytosine and adenine nucleotides would be methylated within CPG islands. Okay, so why would a cell methylate CPG islands? This is just another way that cells can repress transcription. If you know you're not going to need to express a gene for a while, or maybe even ever again for this specific cell, methylating a CPG island and its promoter is a good way to make sure you don't transcribe it by mistake. Alright, here's our first flash quiz. We'll be doing a lot of these throughout the chapter, and if you've seen other chapters already, you've seen these before. But I'm going to ask you a quick question, and I'll give you a few seconds to answer it. Methylation of CPG islands has what effect on transcription? So the answer to this one is it represses transcription. Remember, methylation makes DNA mute. And actually, methylation of histones generally represses transcription as well by making them heterochromatic instead of euchromatic.